This is Blacklist of the Abyss, and you're watching my review for Naruto Shippuden episode 365. Whoa, three, 365. All right, and uh, this one starts off with Naruto kind of just giving his ch the, giving his chakra to everybody, giving them the Nine Tails cloak, and his chakra has, is so strong that even Sasuke's entire group can sense it. All right, they're they're in the freaking leaf village. They're nowhere near there. They can still sense it. So that's that's saying something, all right. Uh, but yeah, Naruto he creates shadow clones in order to give everyone his chakra. And so I don't know if you guys caught this, but when when Naruto does the shadow clone jutsu, he goes like this. That's just the that's oh, I mean yeah, there we go. I, I had to, I had to mirror it. Um, this is what he does to do the shadow clone jutsu, right? But in this episode, that's not what he did. He instead of doing this one hand sign, he did like three different hand signs and ended like this. And I'm like, whoa, what? Like that's weird, but not that big of a deal at all. So I'll just say whatever and move on. Um, thanks to this chakra that uh, everyone gets from Naruto, they all power up. All right. They try to hold the ten tails back using using Ino Shikicho, but Madara gets involved, so that it just doesn't work. All right. Um, there was a scene here with Obito talking to Naruto, and because uh, Lee was crying, and it, it who cares? It was talking, not a big deal. Nothing, nothing much to say here. The only thing I want to talk about from this scene is that line Naruto said about how they're ninjas, so they're supposed to endure. Um, they. Crunchyroll didn't make a note about this. However, uh, in the manga, it was there was a little translator note that stated that this was that this comment was based off of the kanji for the word ninja, because the kanji for the word ninja are they it is it mean it's literally means to endure. So it's it's like a Japanese thing. All right. So don't yeah. If if you thought that was weird, like then. That's why it's because they didn't explain, all right. But that's what it means. It's because of the kanji and stuff, and that's yeah, all right. Um, now after this, um, we got the explanation for why Kakashi was able to use Kamui the way he has been using it the last couple episodes, with you know, just using it as often as he has been, along with just the things he has been doing with it. Just he used Kamui on. The entire eight tails' body, and then shot. It. He brought it in, and then he shot it out again. It's like, great, like you know, uh, the, how can he do this? He's never been able to do anything remotely close to this before, right? Well, that's because he got the nine tails' chakra. All right, he got Kurama's chakra, and that allowed him to use Kamui like that because it, it's Kurama's chakra is just super powerful, and now. The chakra he's got right now that he's got the nine tails cloak, which means he's got more of it and it's just more powerful now. So he he can do who freaking knows what now. He can probably commonly the whole freaking world. <laughs> like I wouldn't be surprised. But no, nah, that's not gonna happen. It'd be it'd be fun. Well, no, it wouldn't be funny if it happened. But whatever. Um, and so after talking and talking and talking, the Ten Tails decides to fight back. All right, well, Madara got involved. That's why, yeah. All right, but whatever. It, it starts to fight back. Okay. And this is up to this point, everything was just okay. All right, but um, Obi but after this, Obito starts talking again. This is where it actually started to get good, because Obito ends up explaining. He's he talks about the Hyuga and their cursed seal. All right. And he says that their curse seal, their curse mark that they place on all the branch family members, it it essentially means that you you're you're trapped in a cage. He says that you're trapped in a cage because of that curse mark. It ends up creating an existence where all you can really do is wait for your death inside of that cage. All right, and he compares the alliance 
to the Huga because all they because they can't do anything either. All they can do is await their deaths at the hands of himself, Madara, and the Ten Tails. So he com he compares them to the Huga and then puts them literally in a bird cage using the Ten Tails's tails. All right, and this is when the the Alliance kind of uses the Nine Tails' cloak and forms this giant bird. All right, and they break out of the cage. And that kind of links back to the Huga and Neji and how th th they were the, the Alliance was able to escape the cage. And Neji was also able to escape the cage by ridding himself of the curse mark through death. So it's like it's 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 symbolism. It's it's really interesting. Like I remember when I read it in the manga at first, I was like, this, wait, how'd they make... I was focusing too much on what was literally... No, I was taking it at face value too much, and I wasn't really thinking enough about it, but then after a little bit, I was able to... I, I remember I was talking to my friend about it, and I was like, yeah, this was so weird. Why'd they turn into a bird for it? It's so weird, you know? Like, I get they're trapped in like... I, and I was I was just talking it out, and I was talking with them and saying, like, yeah, I, get, I mean, I... They were the ten tails trapped them in this cage. They kind of looked like a bird cage, actually. And then I was like, "Wait, did I just say bird cage?" And then all of a sudden, it hit me like bird cage, bird. Oh, okay, I get it now. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, okay. So, like <laughs> at first, I was focusing too much on like the face value of what was going on, but then I like it finally clicked. And then I started thinking about it more and more and more. And then I started to see the big picture here. So. Uh, it's it's really good symbolism in that regard. So don't focus. So some people might focus too much on what, on the bird thing and think, oh man, how could how could they all combine like combine like that and form a bird? And, uh, no, no, that's not the point. The point it's it's simply a one hundred percent of that scene. The focus of it is symbolism. It's not like he. It's not something he randomly came up with as a way to get them out of the out of the cage. No, that's it's. The entire purpose of that scene was not to let them escape an attack of the Ten Tails. It was to provide symbolism for. Uh, it was to provide symbolism for them being able to overcome what Obito and Madara, this the curse mark that Obito and Madara put on them, and being able to fight back and survive, and uh, also linking that back to Neji. So, um, and how he was able to choose the way he died, and yeah. Um, so it, it was interesting. It was very, very good. I liked the way they did that. Uh, and they f start to fight back, and they end up separating Madara and Obito from the Ten Tails, which you might think, you know, oh, that's good. That's really good. But no, it's, it's, it's really not good because Obito and Madara were controlling the Ten Tails. So if they can't control the Ten Tails, then it's not going to be, it's going to do whatever it freaking wants to. So that's 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 not good. that's not good. <laughs> the, the the ninja alliance has essentially screwed themselves over now. Uh, but whatever. Um, the rest of the episode focuses on Sasuke's group. Like I said earlier, they're in the leaf. Right. And they go to this Uzumaki temple on the outskirts of the village. And when they go in there, you see all these masks lying around. Oh, not lying around, hanging around. I guess I guess you could say. All right. And. Orochimaru grabs one, he grabs the Reaper's mask, okay, and then they leave, they're about to go to this Uchiha place, alright, but before they do that, Sasuke does his best Naruto impression, because if you recall, in the beginning of part 2, when Naruto first came back to the village, he jumped up there and he just looked at the village and how it had changed and all that, and now Sasuke is doing the exact same thing, so that's an interesting comparison, it's an interesting parallel being made there, um, but Orochimaru ends up saying, quote, even if both he and the village have changed, the place is still his homeland. And that's how he explained why Sasuke was uh, just looking over the village and stuff like that. Because, it, you know, Sasuke wanted to destroy the village before. And now Orochimaru is saying something like this, and that's something that should be remembered. All right. Even if he and the village have changed, this place is still his homeland. Okay, that's something that should be remembered for later on. All right, um, that's for the whole destroying the village thing. So it gets you actually proposes like, hey, you know, we're we're in the Leaf Village. All the strongest people aren't here. They're at the war. We could take this place over right now. All right, but Orochimaru shoots it down because that's not what he's interested in anymore. All right, 
Um, so they end up going to the Uchiha place, all right, and they they summon the Reaper, all right. The reason, the way they're able to do this is with that scroll that Sui gets you had from like twenty years ago, all right. It's been, it's been forever, but if you remember, he got he him and Jugo got into a fight and they stumbled into one of the Rochimaru's secret bases, and Sui gets you found this scroll in there. Like it's been it's been a long freaking time, but it's that scroll is finally coming back up and it's relevant. All right, that scroll tells you how to unseal the people who are sealed inside of the Reaper. All right, you get that mask from the Uzumaki Temple, you put it on, and in that Uchiha place in front of that tablet, you essentially you you let you let the Reaper possess you, which turns you into a human sacrifice. But you let him possess you, and then you have him cut his stomach open. All right. Because the way the Reaper seals people is to devour them. So if you cut open his stomach, then they can come out. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's not just people either, all right? Because Orochimaru's arms, he gets his arms back by doing this, all right? And when he gets his arms back, he's able to use Edo Tensei on the souls of the Hokage that were trapped inside of there, all right? And, yeah, those are the people who know everything. The, the four Hokage. Um, oh, one other thing that's worth mention that should be mentioned is that uh, I mentioned Orochimaru became a human sacrifice. Well, the reason he was able to survive was because Toby had, I think, was six Zetsu just inside of inside of Sasuke, because the the Zetsu are like plants, kind of. They're like, and they have this Jutsu called the Spore Jutsu, which allows them to kind of attach to people like that. Uh, they've done it, they did it in the Five Kage Summit, or not they, it, though it was like one white Zetsu, um, but he did it during the Five Kage Summit, I'm pretty sure, like I remember, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure he did, yeah, 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 he didn't like all the people who were in the room, and then he, he started like, yeah, he, yeah, he did it in the Five Kage, yeah, he did it in the Five Kage Summit, so, in case you're wondering, like, oh, man, this is, this is stupid, this makes no sense, he just made this up, blah, 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 nah, he, it's actually, it's, it's an established ability that the Zetsu have, um, and the Zetsu are forced out of Sasuke by Jugo using the power, using the Curse Mark Sage Power, remember that, Curse Mark Sage Power. All right, that's how Crunchyroll translated. I don't know how the fans, how the fan subs did it, but that's how Crunchyroll did it. All right, that's how they translated it, and that's something that should be remembered for later on. Um, yeah, that's 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 it. Uh, yep. Yeah, so the the white sets you get used to sacrifice Fredo Tensei, and Orochimaru takes over one of the extra ones. Jugo takes out another one. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's all there really is to talk about with this episode. The Hokage are back, alright, so the, this is gonna get interesting. I remember when I saw this in the manga, like when I saw Rochimaru get that mask, I was like, no, no, it's, it's, it, no, he's not gonna do it, he's not gonna do it, and then the chapter went on, and it's like, I was like, no, no, I was trying to keep myself from getting too excited. And try to convince myself, nah, it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. And I saw this last page, double page spread in the chapter with the four Hokage sitting, just standing down. I was like, I, I freaking marked out, man. It was, yeah, it was crazy. But since I knew it was gonna happen here, I wasn't, I'm not nearly as excited to see it here just because I knew it was happening. So and I was looking, like, I already knew it was gonna happen. So uh, not as exciting as it was the first time around, but still. You know, it's it's pretty for anime only viewers. It's probably pretty exciting. Um, so yeah, as for this episode, the first half was just okay. It was actually kind of boring. But once, <coughs> yeah, excuse me. Uh, once you once we got to the symbolism and the and the stuff with Sasuke's group of that, it was actually great. So i will give this episode a 7.5 out of 10. gotta even things out you know so yeah that's it you guys this episode gets a 7.5 out of 10. rate comment subscribe and i'll see you guys next time <laughs>